Well, if you didn't know, this last week we went to Dallas, Texas for the C3 conference, which is Creative Church Conference. And if you saw like on stage fire, it really happened because they are so incredibly creative. But we took with us 108 mountain movers to Dallas. Yeah, give yourself a hand. The most we've ever taken. And you know, we promote C3. We've been going for years. And today we decided to do something a little bit different. Before we dive back into a new series, we decided, you know what? We realized everybody couldn't go to C3, even though you might have wanted to. And so today we decided to bring you the best of C3 2020 with the best of the best, and that is your pastoral staff. This is like the A team of Mountain Movers Church. You may or may not know who they are. So today, before you guys speak, just introduce yourself as far as the zone, the, what you pastor, okay? Because not everybody may know today. But before we get started, I want to tell you, while we were there, we all had on these on first day. We had this sand color hoodie that said Mountain Movers Church. On down the arms, it says, be bold, be loud, be different has C3 on the other arm, and we were like everywhere. It was a sea, it was so amazing. It was a sea of this hoodie everywhere you looked. So everybody knew who Mountain Movers were, or they were coming up to us and asking, but there was this one lady that she came up to one of the girls in our our group, and she said, hey, I wanna just tell you guys something. She said, we see Mountain Movers everywhere, but every time you guys walk by, I feel the presence of God. And we were like, That is the greatest compliment that we could ever be given because at this church, we've been talking from day one, 16 years ago, that God's presence was our priority. Not just here in this house. It's not just something cool we hang on the wall. It's not just something we say, but Brett and I weren't even there and she was talking to another one of the girls and I was like, that is the highest compliment as pastors we could ever be given of church people, that when you walk by, God's presence is felt. And I pray that over you every day, everywhere you go, that you would be so fired up and so fueled up that God's presence would be felt by those who are around you. Well, today we're going to get started down here with your connections pastor, Pastor the Grant. one and I only Pastor all Grant him. Hendricks. All right. So, and maybe I didn't say, but what they're going to share with you today is their greatest takeaway. Yeah. All right. You're going to hear something different from all of them. We were in two full days all day long. So they're going to share their greatest takeaway that they think you can apply today. All right. Yes. My name is Grant Hendricks. I'm the Connections Pastor here. And uh, one of the greatest takeaways that I had was from a, a pastor named Ed Young Sr. He's 80-something years old and got more energy than me and Brad combined. 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 <laughs> By far. But he said something when he spoke. He said, it is time to speak the truth in love. Yeah. And he told this story. He told this story about this man and wife. The, the, the husband is a photographer. and They go up on this mountain to take these nice pictures and he's he's taking pictures and he just can't quite get it right and he's moving around but she knows that he's a professional she knows that he wants to do it his way and she knows that he's going to do it his way so he's taking pictures and he's backing up and he's backing up and backing up and pretty soon he falls right off the edge of that mountain he lands about 50 foot down There's a big rescue. There's helicopters. There's ambulances. He spends weeks in the hospital. He spends weeks in rehab. And when he finally gets home and gets to talk to his wife about it, he says, why didn't you love me enough to tell me I was getting close to danger? Wow. To the edge. So So as pastors, as life group leaders, as small group leaders, as friends, as parents, as Christians... We need to speak the truth, but speak it in love. Good. So, good. so good. Pastor Willie. I'm Pastor Willie. I'm one of the kids pastors with Court, uh, and we, we have fun doing it. Um, so, uh, but my, my greatest takeaway, um, uh, Pastor Craig Groeschel, he talked about reclaiming your call. Um, and we all have a call, whether uh, we're, we're pastors on a stage, whether we're, we're at home we, uh, or at work or wherever we're at, we all are called by God uh, to, to spread his word. Um, and we are all called to do that. Um, but so often we get so caught up in, in how tired we are, how, how hard it is to, to tell people about Jesus, how nervous, how proud, how, how busy, all these things that can get in the way uh, of your calling. Uh, and, 
And so often we forget to get out of ourselves and to get into the calling. One of the things that, that he said uh, was never sacrifice your calling on the altar of comfort. So often uh, we allow the comfort of our life to overshadow our calling. Um, and, and, he, and he talked about himself a little bit. I'm super visual, so, so he explained that every time he gets ready to get on stage or, or talk or do whatever uh, for God, he physically takes one step forward and, and, and it's an action for him of simply, I'm out of my life right now yeah. and I'm into what God is calling me to yeah. do. So whatever's happening in the life, in my life, whether, whether it feels like a disaster or it's the best thing in the world, I'm stepping into the calling of God in the moment that God can use him completely and wholly. I love that. You know, it's, it's intentional. It's, it's thinking continually about, you know, my, I have to separate my emotions, uh, my setbacks, the, the fears, the frustrations, the things that I'm going through in my life don't need to affect the way that I minister to others in my life. And yeah. hope I'm not stealing this from somebody, but I think it was the same talk where he said, you know, some of the, one of the most spiritual things you can do is just show up. Yeah. Just show up. I'm sorry. If I take somebody's... <laughs> But, but it's so true, just stepping forward and stepping into your calling and stepping in. Because here's what we do is we get so consumed with ourselves and the way we want to design our own life and the way we want our life to be, and we forget that our life is an assignment by God, that we're servants of the Most High God. And every day we have to show up and we have to step into the calling that He's given us. It is the greatest tragedy or travesty, if you will, would be you living your life for yourself. As a Christian, living the life for yourself, not paying any attention to the calling that God has given you and intentionally learning how to step into that and be obedient to what he's called you to do because one day we're all gonna stand before him and we should long to hear him say, well done, my good and faithful yeah. servant. That's so good, Pastor Willie, so good. Courtney, how about you? What was one of your big takeaways? Um, well, I went to a breakout and they were talking about a lot of priorities, prioritizing your schedule and your time. And one of the things that she talked about is what is the vision that you have? What's the vision that you have for your kids and for your family? Um, um, whatever God's called you to, that vision that he's placed in your heart. And she talked about being intentional about working towards a vision and not away from a fear. Because sometimes we can really get stuck in like, we can't do that because of this. We can't do that and we can't do that and we can't do that. But what can we do? What do we want to do? If we say that our vision for our kids is to raise them in a way that they boldly proclaim God and the hope and the love of Jesus to the people around them, what are we going to do to help do that? What are the things that we are going to be intentional about in our day, in our schedule? Because we all know that our schedule can fill up whether we're intentional about it or not. And then you can be really busy doing a lot of things that don't matter at all. And then you'll be exhausted from things that aren't even important to you, but your day is busy. And so she talked about really taking your schedule back and being intentional about what, what are your values? What is that vision that you have in your heart for where your family is and where your kids are headed? And what are you going to do to be intentional about that? Um, one of the things that she questioned us and she said, ask yourself, are my articulated values actually my demonstrated values? She said, when you look at your checkbook and you say, you know, I put God first and I, you know, my, my priorities are this. Is that really what your money reflects? Is that really what your time reflects when you say God's the most important thing? Is that what your day to day, when you look at the, the time you spent that day are the things that you're saying, are those articulated values and goals? Are they really what you're demonstrating in your day to day life? When you look at the week of your schedule and you say, our family puts God first. And then you look at your week, is that really demonstrated in your schedule? And so she just made it really practical of whether it's, you know, in our home, in our, in our workplace or in our ministry, like what is God calling you to? And is what you're doing and what you're saying, are they the same thing? Are those values lining up and do you need to reprioritize something? So good. You know, I think, I, yeah, you should be taking notes right now because this is like the best of the best. I need to take some more notes. You know, I loved that session. I was in that one as well. And I just thought, you know, it doesn't matter what age or what season you're in. We have to constantly come back to being intentional about our values because oftentimes, I mean, we say it, oh, God is first in my life. But really, when you look at 
your bank account and your calendar, it reflects it. It doesn't lie. What is most important to you is on there. And sometimes you're right. We fill it up with things that 20 years when we look back, it, we don't even remember and it didn't matter. But those intentional moments of being in your word and praying over your kids and making sure that you're having that quiet time with Jesus, that's what's gonna matter 20 years from now, not all the other things that we filled our calendars with. So being an intentional really applies to anybody at any age and stage. All right. Miss Mara. Um, I'm Mara, and this is my husband, Remington, and we lead Accelerate, our student ministry. And um, what really stuck out to me was it, they said, let our problem be our platform. And I think about how many problems every single individual we could go through and talk about it for days about our problems. <laughs> I mean, I could go and talk to Remington and just complain to him and tell him my problems and go and just be sad and mopey about it. Or... I can switch the flip, switch the flip, switch the script, flip the switch, whatever. Anyways. You know how it goes. <laughs> you, you know. know. You know what we're meaning. <laughs> but I can switch it around and I can say, okay, like, is this really going to define who I am? And if it is, I'm going to do what God tells me to do and I'm going to let it become my platform. Think about how many miracles you guys have heard. Those people are letting that become their platform. When they're sharing their testimony, they're letting that problem become their platform. And I just thought that was so good. And then it goes on to say, um, we are more comfortable with the problem we have than the solution we don't know. And he told this story about this guy and he had this rock and he was trying to get to safety. He was in water and he's swimming and he has this rock and there's a boat off in this distance and he's going to this boat, he's going to the boat and he won't let go of the rock. And I don't know why he had a rock, but... It was a really nice rock. <laughs> it was a great, Whatever. It was a great rock. <laughs> ah, absolutely. And so he has this rock and he won't let go and they're going, let go of the rock. You got to drop the rock. You got to drop the rock. And finally, he gets to the edge of the boat, and, like, he only has one solution, and it's to drop the rock. And so he drops it, and he comes to safety, and it's like, that, that is our life. We have all these problems that we're just holding on to because we're used to it, and we're carrying all these rocks and these burdens in our lives, and it's like, we have to drop it. We have to get rid of it and say, God, here I am, and step into the boat and the promises that he has for your life. That's so Absolutely. Good. That is very good. One of the biggest mistakes that we make continually is just carrying those things that we were never meant to carry. Yeah. It's like Blake mentioned in the opening uh, intro uh, as we went into My Jesus. We, we come in these, th this room Sunday after Sunday, or maybe you're watching online, and you bring this baggage with you. And what so many of us live under the deception and buy the lie that the enemy sells us, that we have to carry that around, and you don't. Jesus cares for you. So he says, cast your cares on him because he cares for you. You can transfer all of that weight onto Jesus. You don't have to live with it. You can literally lay it at his feet and you can step out and step into your calling without the weight and become who God has called you to be. You're going to have some scars. You're going to have some bruises, right? You're going to be all banged up, but that's okay because that's your platform. That's your testimony. That's what makes you stronger is saying, hey, like I've been through it, you know, but guess what? If I've been through it and God's brought me through it, he can bring you through it too. That's good. Come on, Remy, bring it. What you got? Hi, I'm Remington. <laughs> I already introduced me. Hi. Hi, Remy. Um, I just really want to plug C3 first off. Like if you guys haven't been to C3, you are truly missing out. This is, this True. is truly, truly, truly. This is Mar and I's second year going, and I'm really not sure how they do it, but it just gets better it, every time. Like, and like Misty said on one of the days, like, you think the first day's good? Just wait till the second day. Like, it gets better. And, you know, we had the opportunity to listen to all of these just awesome speakers, like some of the best speakers in the world. But, and, and, Honestly, I mean, I took so many notes that I, like my hand was cramped up for two days like this. <laughs> and, and we came back just so on fire for God that I'm really surprised we're not smoking right now. <laughs> but, but even after all those speakers, um, it doesn't do anything in comparison to what God said to me while I was there through the whole duration of this conference. And what he told me is, he said, you need to humble yourself. You have to normalize the messiness of life. Like you have to normalize that life is, is imperfect. And 
what he said to me, he said, you have so many people coming through the doors every Sunday morning and Wednesday night, and they're carrying all these burdens. They're carrying these sins and um, just all this stuff they're carrying on their, on their shoulders, and they're not going to go to you for help because you're walking around like you've got it all together and your life is perfect. Like, you need to humble yourself. You know, we heard just tons of testimonies um, throughout this conference, and some, some of them even by pastors, what they were struggling with, what these sins they were struggling with. And, like, we should rejoice those testimonies. They were awesome, like, yeah. inspire, inspirational for sure. But um, the saddest part about those stories is the first part of the testimony was them trying to do it all, to get, all on their own. Yeah. They had, they had no community. We have to have community. That's right. That's good. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ha, have you guys ever seen Animal Planet? Is anybody? Yeah, that's a, that's a squirrel moment. Okay. So, so I grew up, I grew up on the crocodile hunter. Like Steve Irwin was my man. Like he was it, you know? And I remember these scenes when he was in Africa and I remember the lion and the gazelles and you know, the lion wasn't going to target the group of gazelles. Like he wasn't going into that group. He was going to target the one that was off on its own, struggling, off by itself. And, and that's how the enemy does us a lot. We need the community. We need people with us fighting for us. And we're not going to heal anybody. Like, yeah. we just don't. That's God's. That's God. Yeah. Like, he's got that. Yeah. Yeah. But we can walk them through it, and we can be there for them. Sure. And, yeah. you know, I just, I just really feel like that's what God, God was speaking to me. I need to humble myself. And without that humility, um, we're not going to have any community. And... Um, Something, something I wrote down yesterday. It said, humility is grace that attracts more grace. Ooh, wow. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. So. So, good. so good. You know, I think one of the coolest things about C3 is you hear all these speakers and you go to breakouts and they're just downloading wisdom and wisdom and wisdom, mostly from life experience, okay? So the, especially when you, when you hear an 84-year-old pastor pastoring the largest church in America in one city, um, Second Baptist Houston, they've got like 80,000 people and he's 84, okay? Like I'm thinking you have more wisdom than I could ever even hope to have. Download a little. But you know what's amazing is that while you're there, God speaks to you. What what Remy is sharing is directly what God told him while he was there. And I think, you know, a lot of times in our life, it's not that God is not speaking to us. It's that we are so stinking distracted by our life and our agenda and our schedules that God will speak all the time if we'll give him room to actually be a part of our day. And it, sometimes it takes us getting away and strategically saying, I am completely going to get out of my routine. I'm going to get away from everybody and everything. And I'm just going to sit in God's presence and I'm just going to take it in and listen. And when you do, God begins to speak. That's, that's so one good. of the coolest parts about C3 is there's no distractions whatsoever. You're just literally basking in his presence. Yeah, yeah. So awesome. Everybody's there just Everybody. doing the yeah. same thing. Yeah. So awesome. All right, Brandy. Yeah. Oh, man, if you guys are not taking notes, you should be because I need a notepad right now. Yes, <laughs> it's so good. I'm serious. Like, I don't see you guys out with notebooks, and these are good things. Um, you know, I, I one thing that really stuck out to me, and this is just a side note, but you know, talking about being uncomfortable and just sitting in it, you know, sitting in, you gotta, we gotta learn how to sit with God, yeah. no matter what st stage or season that you're in. Uh, but one thing that I heard over and over again, and Brandon and I, my husband, and I talked about this a lot um, at the conference, and they said, get behind your leadership. Um, and, you know, that is so vital. And what I love about C3 is it just doesn't talk to church members or church leadership, it talks to everybody. It translates because whether you're in a job in a secular place or whatever, you've got to get behind the vision of your leadership. And if you can't, maybe you should switch jobs because here's the deal. Like in a, in a church leadership, they talked about, I'm a, I mean, breakout after breakout that I was in, get behind the vision of your pastors, because here's the deal. God speaks to the pastors and gives them a vision specific vision for this church, for Mountain Rivers Church. That's who we're sitting under. God gives it to the pastors, and then he gives us vision as we come underneath the vision that the pastors had. And that's the way it should work at your organization, whatever organization you work with. But here's the deal. God always works in a system of, of priorities and, and uh, functionality, systems, all of that stuff. God is a God of order. He's not a God of chaos. And the fact is, is you can have questions, and, and a lot of times, you know, this, this last season, 
You know, there was a lot of times that I didn't understand why what pastors were talking about what they were talking about. Maybe you didn't understand why they were talking about wokeism or, or different things. But I, one of the things I was proud of is when we come to C3, you know, we are not in Dallas, Oklahoma. You know, we're kind of in the Bible Belt, you know, sheltered. Um, but you know what? We're not that far away, and it's coming. And the fact is, is our pastors have done an excellent job educating us on the day and the time and the seasons that we're living in right now. So I just want to kind of give a plug. Can you guys give it up for our amazing pastors? Yes. And I say that because... Matt, Mr. and Brad, you know, they carry the vision, but all of these pastors yes. go out and step out and lead your kids, lead right. your, your students, lead the people. And you know what? It's okay. Like, they're responsible to God. Your job is to get behind them and serve them. And so um, there was a great um, word by Steve Kelly that he spoke, and he talked about sons and daughters of Christ, and he's talked about servants. And so if you will, if you want to translate that, it's like, people that are following after God in the world and people that are just secular, kind of just following the pace of the world. And so I want to read you a couple of things so you can kind of test where you're living at. But if you want to be a son and daughter of Christ, here's, here's some examples. Here we go. So one thing that really stood out to me is sons will defend the house. And you know what? That's hard, you know, because sometimes you may not always understand or really kind of get, you don't, you don't really get it. Or maybe you don't agree. But the fact is, is you will still defend the house. It's not uh, they said that and I don't know why. It's we stand for this. And we get behind that. And sons will honor. They'll honor even when they don't always fully understand. It's okay to ask questions. But when it's go time, you need people that are on board with the yes man. You need yes men. Because, guys, we're in a battle. We're in a fight. And we're not fighting against weak weak things. We're fighting against the temptations of this world. That's it's, it's game on. And so, yes, I mean, there's been many times we've come and we're like, I don't get it. Like, why are we doing this? You know, but when it's game time, you know, it's like, but I'm running with it. We're, we're ready. We're going, we're doing this, you know? And so it's not, it's not that it's not okay to ask questions, but you better be on board if you're going to serve the house. So, um, servants see themselves working on someone else's house. But sons and daughters see themselves as stewards of God's house because they know their inheritance. Guys, we're taking this to heaven with us, all the way to heaven. And as many as will come with us, that's what we're about. And that's what we should be about every time we open up these doors. That's why we plug serving so hard. It's your opportunity to get on board with what God is doing. It's your opportunity to serve alongside of Christ. It's not an opportunity for you to just like waste your time. No, this is kingdom living. This is right here getting on board of being a son and daughter of the most high God that we're going to be in heaven with forever. So, um, one other thing that I liked is, um, servants bind themselves to new people, uh, servants bind new people to themselves, but sons bind them new people to the house. You know what? It's not about clicks. It's about getting them plugged into who Jesus is and getting them in community. Like Remy said. And so, um, servants only tell what they want you to know. But sons share freely and give life-giving words. It's not about your platform, you know. It's about God's agenda yeah. and whatever that looks like. You give life-giving words. It was really good. And I, this is my favorite. But servants come fully grown. They are not changing. We know everything and, you know, we know how it's supposed to roll. But sons have puppy feet. Have you ever seen the dogs that you get and they have really big puppy feet and you're thinking, oh my gosh, that dog is going to get big. That is what we're supposed to be. As sons and daughters of Jesus, we're just supposed to roll with the flow. You're not always going to know what it looks like. And I think that that is such a good word for us in this season and time because guys, we're on the brink of what God is about to blow up. And we don't always know what that's going to look like. And that doesn't have to be a place of fear because we have really good people that are listening for God's voice and, and are okay to sit in the uncomfortable. And they're going to give us vision and we're going to run with it. But here's the deal. It doesn't have to be our agenda. It doesn't have to look the way that we thought it was. You, we just need to get under and serve and go forward. So good. That's so good. All right, Jana, why don't you give us your takeaway? And we are Jana and Josh Basler, the online campus pastors. And I went to a um, breakout session called Walking Through Crisis. And they talked about how important it is for self-care. You know, Elijah was such an incredible uh, 
prophet and he saw miraculous things. But then when he was in despair and distraught, it was because he was tired. He was exhausted and he was hungry. And um, the angel of the Lord came to him and he didn't give him a revelation or a vision. He gave him food. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, that happens at my house when I'm, when I don't feel good. Sometimes we can't hear God when we're food. starving. We just Put me need to bed. <laughs> no, but he knew he yes. needed to nourish his physical yes. body first. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And so first Kings 19, seven says the angel of the Lord came and touched him, uh, came again and touched him and said, get up and eat some more or the journey ahead will be too much for you. And another good point that they said was don't isolate yourself, which is what, you know, Pastor Remy talked about and stuff. But, um, you know, healing happens in connection. Get in a small group. And yeah. if you can't physically get here on Wednesdays, we have online yeah. campus life groups. We have incredible leaders. We have, uh, we're just, we're so proud of our online team and hosts and family that they, they jump on and they pray for each other and they encourage each other uh, throughout the week. So, um, so don't miss out. There's no excuse. Um, and then another one was, um, it's okay to get professional help sometimes. Uh, we have a, a really great Christian counselor that we go to from time to time when we need, and um, it's okay. Uh, so what God allows, God redeems. So just surrender each day, and God is going to see you through. And as Pastor Brad mentioned earlier, Craig Rochelle said, okay, I have to say this. I didn't intentionally send my text of what I was going to talk about so Josh couldn't see it because he always takes my stuff. Takes my good stuff. So I shouldn't have sent it to Pastor Brad either. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, So anyway, but he was just talking about how when he's really down and out and ready to quit, he said, sometimes the most spiritual thing you can do is show back up and just keep making that next step forward. Yeah, so good. I want to jump into on, on the getting professional help. A, a lot of uh, us have this stigma in our mind or this perception that getting, pro- when we say professional help, we're talking about a professional Christian Bible believing counselor yeah. that's not cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Have you ever noticed some of the, some of the craziest people become counselors? I don't know what that is, but it's a real thing. And you should really know the counselor that you're getting into, and they should come by high recommendations. Uh, we have some great counselors that we recommend in the area. But, but listen, uh, I heard it said this way. Well, actually, while we were at C3, you know, if we are to break a limb, we don't hesitate at all to go to the hospital and get professional medical help in getting that arm or that leg mended, and we get a cast, and we get it taken care of. But so many times we might be going through emotional or spiritual, uh, relational trauma, but we don't want to get professional help to help walk through a season or or a situation that we might be in. Listen, I'm telling you, there's no shame at all in stepping out and getting someone to help you because a lot of times a professional counselor, a Christian counselor can help you see things that you don't see. They can help you look from the outside in at your, at your life, at your relationship, your marriage, and they can help you walk through the, some processes to help you heal through some things that you've been through. Misty and I have been through multiple sessions with, with counselors, and I'm telling you, it's, it's one of the big reasons why our marriage is so strong today because there was no shame in our game. We said, you know what? We need someone to just kind of help us process uh, our relationship and speak into our life and help us walk through the steps of making it better. Don't you want your life and your, your relationship with, and your relationship with God? And your marriage to be better, step out and get some professional Christian Bible believing help. Yeah, so good. All right, so Josh. Pastor Josh, we're going to close out with you today. Right. What was your greatest takeaway? Okay, first, I want to give a shout out to my online family, all my Woo! peeps. It's good to online see you guys. Campus. And uh, we, we reached many states, but we have a family that's been watching with us from Kenya, Africa, week after week after week. And we had a salvation in Africa yes, a couple her, weeks ago. Last, went, last yeah. week, a young girl named Mary, and she's, she's her and her family watching today. And um, she gave her life to Jesus last week. All How the way cool is that? Up. And so, we're so glad to have them with yeah, us. So, Mary, and we, we're excited for you. We're for you. It's the best decision you can ever make. And we love you. And so, but anyways, back to C3. Um, you know, we are in a battle. I mean, there's just a war going on for your courage. 
You know, and I feel like it's an absolute attack of the enemy that, I mean, he's attacking families. He's trying to keep you from standing up for what to believe in. And, um, you know, courage, they gave a biblical uh, definition of courage, the God-given ability to stand for the truth. And uh, if there's something that Satan is attacking, it's the truth. And, and we as families, we as parents, we as leaders in our communities, in our homes, man, we have got to gain the courage and, and, and just stand up for what's right. Yeah, that's right, that's right. Good. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay to stand up for what's right. You know, I know the church world has kind of been, we, we felt kind of shushed. Mm-hmm. Maybe, maybe we shouldn't have been, but that's the reality. Right. And because we've been silent and, and sleeping our world is turned into chaos on, right. while, we, while we kept our mouth shut. Well, it's time for us to open up our mouths. It's time for us to speak. It's time for us to lead our family boldly and courageously. You know, I think about um, uh, when, when the Israelites were going, uh, they were right on the brink of getting, going into the promised land. And we, then they sent out the 12 spies and they, they came back and 10 of them, and all of them were like, yeah, the land is beautiful. There's so much great fruit in it. But 10 of them were like, but there's giants. There's things standing in our way. There's, the cities are so fortified. It's, it's just impossible. But then you have Joshua and Caleb who were like, whatever, man, let's go take it. Let's go. God promised us the promised land. Let's go get it. And I think so many times we listen to everyone around us but God. But God, and, 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 and we lose, and we forget the promises he's made for our family, and, and we begin to like, oh, well, I'm, I'm scared to make this decision for my family. What will my, the other families that I know say, what, what, how will this affect things when God's just like, just, just as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, why don't we just stand up and be bold about it? You know, it says in uh, Joshua 1, 6, it says, be strong and courageous. For you are the ones who will lead these people to possess the land I swore to their ancestors I would give them. Yeah. Be str- the, the, the next verse says, be strong and very courageous. Yeah. You know, it's time. It's just time. Good. It's time for us to be strong and courageous. You need it. Your family needs it. Your, your neighbors need it. This nation needs it. And this world needs it. Amen. 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 So good. So good. So, so good. I think, you know, that's probably the underlying takeaway when we left C3, and that was part of their theme is be bold and be loud in a world that wants to silence you, in a world who wants to say, "Uh uh-uh, hey, you're in the wrong place to be talking about Jesus. No, Jesus is appropriate in every place, and they need to understand that. You need to walk in with the presence of God, and you need to be known and be loud and be proud. Amen. Amen. Will you guys give these guys a hand? They did a phenomenal job today. Incredible. Pastoral staff, we are so blessed and so thankful for them. Thank you guys for sharing those things. You know, while we were down in Texas, we have a a tradition that we happen to love, and that is we have to carve out time uh, on one of the days to go out to lunch to a place that's called Hard Eight Barbecue. Has anybody ever heard of Hard Eight Barbecue? They've got multiple locations there around the Dallas area. It's so good. And uh, I I remember one when we were there, we were in the line, and my son Tyler, who his his eyes are just as big as mine when it comes to food, uh, on the plate. And I said, "Hey, bub," I said, "Listen, man." I said, I'm glad to bless you. You eat whatever you want, but just don't put too much on your plate. You know, just only what you think you're going to eat. And so he orders a full rack of ribs. All right. (laughs) Full rack, one pound of ribs. And I thought, we'll see. I don't know if he can do it or not. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. So when the meal gets done, I I look over out of side side of of my eyes and and he's like holding the stomach. I'm like, don't do it. (laughs) I said, keep going. And he had half of a rack of ribs left when it was all said and done. But I, I was thinking about that and I thought, you know, actually he's the smartest guy in the room. He's the smartest guy in the room because yesterday, right, we'd been home for, for, you know, for quite some time while I'm eating this lunch that I had prepared, like grilled chicken salad or something. I look over and the dude has half a rack of ribs on his plate for lunch. And I said, son, you're brilliant. You are brilliant. You see, he made it a point to take home something right, from that meal. And so I want to encourage you to do the same thing today. My question for you is, what's in your to-go box? You heard a lot of great things shared around this semicircle today. You know, we poured two days of ourselves into hearing from God and being poured into and being inspired by God and hearing his word and being in God's presence. And we brought back some stuff for you to put in your to-go box, praying that when you leave today, 
just one thing, maybe just one thing that you're going to remember that you're going to allow to settle and sit in your heart and your spirit, something that's going to help you, something that's going to change you, something that's going to make you better. So my question for you is, what is that? What is in your to-go box right now? What are you going to take away with you when you leave? Let's pray today. Father, thank you, God, for the, the incredible feedback, for the incredible experience that we all had as a church family while we were in Grapevine, God, being together, worshiping together, going after God together, hearing your word together, rubbing shoulders and loving on one another. God, thank you for the incredible experience that you gave us, God. Thank you for helping us to come back different than the way we came. But Father, I pray that for those, Lord, that are watching online or those that are in your house today that uh, didn't have the privilege of being able to join us, God, or the, or the opportunity to be able to join us, I pray, Lord, that there's something that was shared today, God, that would bless them, that would help them, that would feed them, that would be something they can take home, God, something that they can feast on all week long that will bless them and help them to get better, not just personally, maybe even professionally, but spiritually, God, as leaders, as believers, as husbands, as wives, as sons, as daughters, whatever it may be, I pray by the power of your Holy Spirit that you would let that thing settle down in their soul and let them be changed and let them be different because of it. With heads bowed and eyes closed today, I have a very important question for you, whether you're watching online or you're in God's house today. Do you know Jesus as your personal savior? Have you made that decision to make Jesus Lord of your life? The reason I'm asking is that it is the most important decision you will ever make in your entire life. And I believe that you are here today or you're watching online, joining us today online because God has made this appointment with you that he wanted to speak to you by his Holy Spirit because he wants you to open the door to your heart so that he can come in and sit on the throne of your heart. He wants to be Lord of your life. And so my question for you today is, have you asked God to forgive you of your sins? Have you believed in, in your heart with all your might that Jesus is the Son of God? Have you confessed Jesus to be Lord of your life? He is waiting for you and life is waiting for you on the other side of surrender. So how about it? Is that you today? If you're watching online, I want you to comment all in in the comment section below. If you're in God's house today right now, I just want you to raise your hand right now. No one is looking around. This is between you and Jesus. Just raise your hand right now. We're gonna pray this together as a church family. So at this time, if we can all join together in one voice in unity, praying this prayer with those that have made this life-changing decision. Father, forgive me of my sins. I believe with all my heart Jesus is the Son of God. It is only through Him I can be saved. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I dedicate my life to you, God, today and this day forward. Sit on the throne of my heart. Change my life for your glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen.